Hello everyone and welcome to Edusoids Clinics. We are back to our discussion on intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma and today we are going to discuss the management of resectable disease. So what is resectable disease? Now we have already seen the criteria of resectability. We have seen how we decide the 6-7 points that we discussed in staging the disease. So when we say resectable disease, we mean that the patient is fit there is no metastasis, there are no high risk features and we will see these high risk features. These are specific high risk features which have been discussed in literature and no extra hepatic disease, no metastasis, no negative, okay. And FLR is adequate because we are going to need a liver resection. Future liver remnant assessment is very important. When it comes to specific contraindications to resection, we know that if bilateral second order biliary radicals are involved, reconstruction is not possible, volumes are low and we can't operate. If second order radical is involved on one side with vascular involvement on contralateral side, it is again a contraindication to rejection. So these are basically anatomical contraindications to rejection. Atrophy on one side with second order biliary radical involvement on contralateral side again is a contraindication to rejection. Now, when we talk of high risk intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma features, these are the patients who will benefit from neoadjuvant therapy, and that is why studies now are trying to identify these high risk features. You can see the points, multifocal tumors, satellite lesions in the same lobe of liver, which is technically resectable, solitary lesion more than 5 cm state T1B or greater, my major vascular invasion, which is technically resectable and nodal metastasis. So all these points are high risk features. And if you see the NeoGAP trial, if you want, we can discuss the trial separately. But based on NeoGAP trial, it is very clear that these are the cases where neoadjuvant therapy with GAP regimen, this regimen is important to remember, it is gemcitabin, cisplatin and nepeclitexel. So GAP regimen may help these patients. So that is the point on resectable intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Now, when it comes to surgery, let us have a discussion on all the relevant points. As I mentioned earlier, future liver remnant assessment is very important. We do a CT liver volumetry. If the volume of future liver remnant is greater than 30% in non-serotic and greater than 40% in serotic, you have enough volume. If the future liver remnant is not adequate, then portal vein embolization is the preferred strategy. We have published an article on large HCCs and criteria for sequential taste followed by PVE, which can augment the liver more and that can also be used. Anatomic versus non-anatomic rejection in cases of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, the data is very clear that anatomic is preferred. Margin greater than 1 cm is ideal. And when it comes to subcentimetric margins, 5 to 9 mm group did better than 1 to 4 mm group. So that is what the literature says. When we talk of nodal dissection, as per the staging criteria, at least 6 nodes need to be dissected in IHCC. Station 12 needs to be removed in all cases. In right hepatectomy cases, that is right-sided disease, Periduodenal and peripancreatic nodes need clearance. In left-sided disease, you need to clear the lesser curvature and the inferior phrenic nodes. So when we talk of lymphadenectomy in these cases, like I said, hepatodurinal ligament nodes have to be cleared in all cases. The lesser curvature nodes need to be cleared when it is the left-sided disease, whereas the periduodenal and peripancreatic nodes in the right-sided disease. Multifocal disease goes for neoadjuvant therapy based on the high risk criteria and after that decision is taken based on response to neoadjuvant therapy. Vascular excision and vascular reconstruction if R0 is feasible is recommended. Taste, tear, hepatic artery, chemotherapy and ablation. There is no enough data so far when it comes to intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma to recommend it as a part of guideline. So these are key points 
relevant to surgery for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma that you need to keep in mind. Now, here are some cases that you can see different presentations of patients on IHCC. Case 1 is a rejectable case where you can do a left hepatectomy with lymphadenectomy and that is what was done in case 1. Case 2 will need downstaging. So, we did a right portal vein embolization. You give neoadjuvant chemotherapy and then plan surgery. Case 3 is not upfront rejectable. It is lesions on both sides of the liver and that is going to need different management that we are going to see in the next presentation. So, case 1 and 2 is what we have discussed so far, rejectable disease, downstaging followed by surgery. Now, coming to key questions on adjuvant therapy, the adjuvant therapy with capsitabine is recommended in all rejected cases and the landmark trial in this regard is BILCAP trial. So, BILCAP is a randomized phase 3 trial which discusses capsitabine versus observation. As we know for these diseases in the past, before BILCAP trial, gemcitabine was the agent of choice. However, now we are preferring capsitabine. It's a tablet-based therapy, easier for patients. Compliance is better and outcomes are good. So, current recommendation of guidelines after rejectable disease, adjuvant chemotherapy with capsitabine. Ongoing trials in adjuvant setting, there is Etika 1 trial which is studying gemsis versus observation. There is a GAIN trial which is a periop trial that is neoadjuvant surgery and adjuvant trial. Again, is discussing gemsitabine cisplatin and OPTIC is a trial which is studying the targeted therapy in figratinib. Okay, so these are the trials that are ongoing, results are awaited. So, with that, we conclude the discussion on rejectable intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma management. In upcoming parts of this series, we will discuss management of locally advanced as well as metastatic intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Thank you.